9th of the 10th, 2013, midweek teaching at Jesus the Christ Ministries Mission. We've got a word of encouragement from Nottingham in England, from Brother Palmer, who's rejoicing over Brother Isara and Sister Roletta's testimony. He really loves to hear testimonies. And it is a great testimony, uh, very simple. Uh, when the Lord does things, very simple. Very simple when God created all things. When he said, let there be light. And there wasn't any fuss. He just said, let there be light. Let there be a firmament. Let there be this. Let there be that. And it was. It was just like the way he said it. Exactly. And that is what I run with. That's the concept that I run with as a child of the Most High God and a servant of the Most High God, a son of the Most High God. And as a saint, that's the concept I run with. What he says is, and Hebrews 11.6 says that we must believe he is. If we're going to receive from him, we got, we've got to believe he is. Hebrews 11, 6. It says it's impossible to please God without faith. We must believe he is. And you've got a lot of prosperity preachers out there making big dollars. Millions and millions, tens of millions. But they don't believe he is because everything they, they give out has a price tag and barcode on the back. They don't believe he is able, capable and available without a label. Amen? And they'll never see the true hand of God till they let go of the side of the, 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 the swimming pool and let God be God. They'll never learn how to do the walk of life. They'll never know how to to swim and do the swim. Hey? In the spirit. They won't have any idea of the Holy Ghost white water rafting. <laughs> Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Today we're going to be reading out of Matthew 10. So if you can take your sword and take your... <laughs> That's what we destroy, all lies, liars, demons, doubt, fear, hatred, violence. We, we, we draw the sword on it, don't we? We draw the sword, the word of God. We're going to start reading at Matthew 10 and the verses 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. All phones, all mobile phones are off, yes. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword, for I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Final verses 39. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. It, it, it. It's pretty strong talk, isn't it? Pretty strong stuff. This is where most fall short. In, in, in the whole of Matthew chapter 10, it, Matthew 10 is a, uh, is a, a, a cost chapter it's a discipleship briefing 
the whole of Matthew 10. If you, if, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty with Christ, you read Matthew 10 over and over and over. And you will find out it's not one saved, always saved. Just by reading that one chapter. Look, our primary verse today is verse 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So we're, we're cutting down to the family roots here. We're getting down to the family. And I dare say, in brackets, marriage. But I know people don't want to talk about that, you know. Uh, husbands and wives and... Um, no one has left house or land, husband or, or it doesn't actually say husband, it says no one has left house or land or wives or children, possessions for his name's sake and not being, rewar and not being rewarded for him. And that in the King James Version, it doesn't say left, it says forsaken. For his name's sake, not just, there's plenty of people out there forsaking their wife and children and land for their own sake. Or for a prettier chick. <laughs> or for, you know, a richer man or whatever. That's not what the Lord is saying. It's for his name's sake and the kingdom. We see the priority there, don't we, in the, in this life. Jesus and the kingdom. Hey? Jesus and the kingdom. It brings glory to God that someone would do that. They forsake their own for him. That's what I like. Their brother Isara. He's Samoan, but he's not Samoan. He acknowledges that. He's not bogged down with the culture and tradition. We have to let go of that. We have to let... we If we're going to be successful saints, if, if we're going to be pleasing to Father, we're going to have that testimony of Enoch, we're going to have to let go of the culture and tradition. and uh, The things in, in, in your culture and tradition and family values that cross over the living word. The rest, you know, cultural foods, oh, give me some. <laughs> Yummy. I'll go seconds on that, please. You know what I mean? It has to be, you know, we got to be um, logically spiritual or spiritually logical about it. Those things that cut across the narrow room try to divert us yes you know what I mean that doesn't mean go home like a whirlwind and throw everyone and everything out of the house no it means be wise it means be led by the spirit the perfect balance is to be led by the spirit that's why he gave us the Holy Ghost these who are led by the Holy Ghost are the sons of God. Amen. Our message today is called Diamonds Are Not Forever. You know the old James Bond? Diamonds are forever. No, diamonds are not forever. Diamonds have an end. You know, the old crystal chandelier hanging in the hall, the marble statuettes standing so stately in the hall, you know. Oh, the crystal chandelier lights up paintings on the wall. And the marble statuettes that hang, uh, stand so stately in the hall. It all wears off. It all has a use-by date. Anything of this earth has a use by day, even human. 
I mean, that humans wear thin with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> humans wear thin with me, I tell you. Humans. That's why I'd rather hang out with saints. You're listening. You know, people wear thin with me. <laughs> I'd rather hang out with saints. We're to know each other after the spirit. When you know people after the flesh, they wear thin, don't they? I mean, there is a use by don't. As you go along in life. As I travel down the road of life, come to know that there's lows and there's highs. I've seen that there's wars and there's peace. And Jesus, he hung on a tree. Well, he's coming again, they say, on the white clouds he'll be riding that day. And all those people who claim they are his, they'll be waiting to go home with him. They claim they are his. Claim. Hey? Many have claimed uh, a piece of land and said they're... they're, they're Gold in them their hills. You know, they've claimed a piece of land that's not theirs. Many claim to be his. And they'll be waiting to go home with him. Are we born again? Do we keep his commandments? Are we really his friend? So diamonds aren't forever. It's a little message about my wife's life before I met her, before we were married and she lived and fared sumptuously in Germany in the city of Gießen, Lobach in Germany and she lived in a upper class, uh, 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 or I would say upper middle class surrounds and rubs shoulders with the wealthy and the rich because her boyfriend or de facto uh, was the assistant of the mayor in Gießen in Lobach and they drank champagne and had fancy um, gatherings and she was transported and ushered to the shopping centres uh, by uh, a chauffeur so to speak or a driver and they ate the best, you know, the best of veg and meats and and yeah, she fared sumptuously and uh, her fiance or supposedly her fiance, her um, uh, de facto, on top of the, being the assistant of uh, the mayor, uh, therefore a lot of doors were opened to him. He was also a drug runner running drugs in Asia and it all came undone one day and he was uh, put to death in uh, Cebu in the Philippines and uh, he had a lot of money, uh, ill-gotten gain and my wife uh, went back to the Philippines very disappointed and very down and unsaved of course, hell bound and and then the appointed time came when we met and she came to the Lord and was water baptised and we married and had two beautiful children and uh, we're in the ministry today and she's been in the ministry with me for the last 17 years. And in the process of time and knowing and walking with Jesus, she testifies in this particular message uh, going back to um, in around 2002 that diamonds are not forever because diamonds diamonds come from the earth and if we open up our Bible today at 1 Peter 1 we'll have a look there in 1 Peter 1 diamonds are not forever Hi. 1 Peter 1 verse 24 uh, All flesh is as grass and the glory of man as the flower of the grass The grass withers and its flower falls away But the word of the Lord endures forever hey? 
Isn't that wonderful? There's only one enduring forever, and that is the Word. Man is like the grass and the glory of man. And her fiancé was a man and just like grass. He wasn't a saint. He was a man. He had a use by date. And his glory was like the flower of the grass. I don't care, look. Boxer Muhammad Ali. He's shaking all over now like a pack of magic noodles. His glory is finished. And he's nearly finished. The Kennedys, the whole lot, myself included. This body has a use by date. We need to look to the author and the finisher. Hallelujah. We need to look to the one that said, unless you love me more, unless you love me more, you're going to free fall into hell, fire eternal. Unless you love me more than your mother, your sister and your brother. Hey? Ask yourself, this one question. When the phone rings and you know it's your mum or you know it's your dad or you know it's a friend or you know it's your girlfriend or your wife or your husband, do you answer it any quicker than you would if you knew it was the pastor? <laughs> just ask yourself that question. I don't know why I said that. I just said it. I don't know. I don't know everything. I'm not God. <laughs> if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Uh, let's go over to John. Let's have a look in 1 John and, and see what we find there. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world or the love of the Father is not in them for all that is in the world lust of the eyes lust of the flesh pride of life is not of father it's of the world the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of god abides forever hallelujah can you say amen hey heaven and earth will pass away but the word of God remains forever. This earth with all its diamonds. This earth. I was just reading from 1 John. Amen. This earth will pass away. The atmosphere. Terrible atmosphere in this earth. Hey. 1 John I just read from chapter 2, 15 to 17. Hey? My wife married a man or a saint. Not just a, a man with a use by date on his body. She married a saint. And uh, a saint is one who walks in the light. Or the word of God, the knowledge of God, up to the light knowledge they have. God doesn't expect you to walk in the light of someone else. Or the knowledge or the ability or the, the amount of knowledge someone else has. Hey? Diamonds aren't forever. Diamonds are forever. Are you listening today? Hey? The things of this world are not forever. Don't waste your time. We're born again. We, we, we have to get this concreted. We're, we're it's saints now. As I said to a couple of Mormon fellows that came to the door the other day, and they said, oh, well, what makes your uh, uh, ministry and church any different to any other? I said, well, we're led by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey? 
We're led by the Holy Ghost. These are the sons of God, not those who were born of the Spirit. Many, many millions born again. But they're not led by the Spirit. They're still in the flat. They still treasure their culture, tradition, their family. It's just even as if they're, they're born again, but they're not born again. Like sort of they're de facto with Jesus. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the de fact is, of the de facto is, they're in sin. <laughs> That's defects of the de facto. <laughs> it's sin. So, you see, when, when we're born of a woman, we're in that realm. We're in that human, carnal, worldly, lust, full, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, Pride of life. You, see, you hear them all the time. Oh, I'm, uh, 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 I'm from, you know, Nepal. Or I'm so proud of being, you know, an Aussie. Come on, Aussie. How many are proud to be a saint? How many are proud of Jesus? How many are voicing that wherever they go? How many on the golf course and they hit a hole in one and go, Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Woo! Love you, Lord. And the caddy driver looks over and goes, Do you really have to? I mean, can you keep that for Sunday? <laughs> hey? As I mentioned in our... Um, Mechanics of marriage in the last couple of sessions, last couple of Sundays. You know, the, the, the man gets married and moves on. He leaves the mum and dad and relatives and family and says, look, go and mind your own business. I'm married now. Leave me alone. I've got a life to live of my own. Get out of me hair. Get out of me pocket. I, I get that witness when I read, read Hebrew. And Paul's writings where he says, um, do not forsake the fellowshipping of the brethren together. Hey? On the first day of the week, or the day of the Lord, the first day of the week, Sunday. So, you know, we don't forget that. We, 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 we don't live in each other's pockets. You see, though, in Hebrews, the saints, they gathered together on the first day of the week. They weren't in each, each other's pockets every day. Seldom visit your neighbour's house, at least he gets sick of you and hate you. Amen? <laughs> and we get a lot of that, don't we? I used to see it in the world. All the time. The world don't have the wisdom that God gives us. When I, I treasure a relationship, I keep my distance. Because I treasure that relationship. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to lose it, you know what I mean? I think a better word would be not so much keep my distance, but I I show respect, you know. It's sort of like with the Lord. I treasure my relationship with the Lord. I, 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 I treasure my master in God. So I stay in my place as a creature, a created being. So diamonds aren't forever. We need to... To prioritize the forever. We need to prioritize the forever. The world says that diamonds are a girl's best friend. That's on the 
on the lady side of things. This is the wisdom of the world. But diamonds are a girl's best friend. And a silly woman sang that song, Marilyn Monroe. Silly meaning foolish, ignorant. And on the man side, on the other side of the coin, you got the man. A man's best friend is a dog. And neither is true. You won't get a better friend than Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> oh, what a friend. Eh? You won't get a better friend than Jesus. Diamonds, gold, silver, money, land, possessions, real estate portfolios. It's all, it all is temporary. Temporary. It can't do the job that Jesus does in our hearts and lives. Hey? Only the truth is forever. You know, humans are actually, they're looking for the forever. They really, they want that carton of beer to never run out. They want a, a bottomless beer. They want a bottomless bank account. They want a bottomless um, real estate list. They want a bottomless life. They want a bottomless amount of friends. They want bottomless sensation, bottomless pre pleasures. They want all bottomless. They want it forever. They want it just to continue on and on and on and on. And it can in Jesus. His word is a bottomless wine, quality, far beyond Don Perion, far beyond, hey, far beyond. His love is, is, is bottomless, has no end. His, his peace is far beyond the understanding of the mind. His joy is so bottomless, you can't talk about it. You just have to maybe go, Ah! Ah! Like an eagle landing or something. <laughs> I'm thinking of changing the name of the Chester Eagles landing. No. <laughs> Unspeakable joy. There's no words in the human vocabulary, not just the English, the Spanish, Egyptian, Syrian. We have that in Jesus. But diamonds aren't forever. And diamonds are a foolish girl's best friend. Not all that glistens is gold. <laughs> you know, there is painted fire. But real fire burns, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm not talking about this Pentecostal or Penny, P double N Y, Pentecostal fire. Hoopla and turkey trot on the stage. That's not necessarily always the Holy Ghost fire. Because Holy Ghost fire will take you out. Holy Ghost fire 
will wipe you out. There'll be no more of this rubbish, oh, but my will. There'll be no more of this trying to find loopholes in the missing ending system. <laughs> trying to cop out and say, oh, but you know, because God knows what you know. I didn't really know that. That's why I'm still sinning, you know. Yes, you did. You did know that. Don't lie to yourself because you're not lying to me. You're lying to yourself. That's called in biblical terms self-deceived. <laughs> Hell bound. Satan didn't even have to deceive you. He, you were just so easy pickings. You know? Diamonds are not forever. The world is not forever. The job you have today is not forever. They'll give you the flick when they're ready. But as the Lord said, <coughs> to Elijah down at the brook Cherith, when the, when the brook dries up, don't worry about it, I have it already sorted. <laughs> and then the ravens came in, <laughs> with that beak meat. And we're a beak meat ministry. Hey? We wait on the Lord and he provides. Hey? The Lord provides where he guides. And we unction by, and function by the Holy Ghost. We function by the unction. Hey? So for my wife, it was prost, prost, prost in Germany... But she was not a happy camper. Hey? She was not happy. He who loves father or mother more hey? than me. If you love humanity more than Jesus, look, humanity can't cut it for you. I woke up to that and realised that and got a revelation of that 26 years ago. Humanity can't cut it for me. The proverbial sayings of Solomon say very clearly that no one knows the pain in your heart fully. No one can share in your joy. Ah! Ah! So where are you left after that proverb? You're left looking to the author and the finisher. <laughs> he knows your pain. He knows everything about me. He knows when I'm sick. He knows when I'm well. Whatever my condition, Jesus can tell because he knows everything about me. Hey? He knows everything. So we share. We, we share our lives with Jesus and walk with him. And then we're not disappointed, are we? The huge majority of the people in the world today are disappointed people. Lion share of people in churches are disappointed because they'd rather walk with humans, limited, used by date, human, than walk with the Lord. Hey? They'd rather walk with other troubled humans and have them as priority rather than Jesus' priority. And when we take on, seriously take on our new birth and accept 
the new birth conditions. Matthew chapter 10. When we accept the new birth conditions, we start to glory in the new birth blessings. Example, Matthew 10, 16. I, I'm going to send you out as sheep among wolves. Beware of humans. Verse 17. For they will take you to the courthouse. Matthew 10, 18. They'll bring you before rulers and accuse you of things. Do not worry what you're going to say. I'm with you. Matthew 10, 22. You're going to be hated by all sinners for my name's sake. But if you endure this and don't turn back and go with your haters and side with them and go with them so they won't hate you, you will be saved. And there's a lot of that blackmail going on everywhere in families, relationships and, 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 and relatives. Oh, well, we'll disown you. And you won't be part of our family anymore. We'll cast you out. Thank God for that. Because I'm not your human, I'm not your taxi driver. I'm the Lord's taxi driver. And he got other people for me to pick up. Because <laughs> they're my brother, sister and mother and relatives who hear the word of God and do it. Someone can say amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. So, we're doing family and marriage. We're doing use by dates here today. Hey? The Lord is good. The Lord is mighty. The Lord wants us to zero in on Him. The Lord wants us to look to Him. Because he wants us to rejoice always. And if you do look to him, you will be able to say, like Paul, rejoice in the Lord always. Even when he was on, his, on the road to Jerusalem, Paul the Apostle bound, wrapped up in the Holy Ghost, sold out for Jesus, heading towards Jerusalem, knowing that chains and tribulation were awaiting him, knowing that, he still rejoiced in the Lord always. Whether in much or whether in little, I have learned from God to be content. Whether I'm eating a salad roll off the road or whether I'm eating Spanish omelettes and eggs benedictine, I am content. <laughs> Whether my latte is flowing over into two lattes, I will be content. Amen? Because I've put in priority, because I've put Psalm 16.5 into action. Lord, you are the portion of my cup and of my inheritance and therefore hence you will take care of my lot because you are the cream of the milk in my life. You are the number one, you are the preeminent, you are my first th thought in the morning and my dreams at night. You are the great I am. I believe he is, therefore I am able, capable to overcome all obstacles. I am able to do all things through Christ's strength. I can do all things on will. 
Because when I say yes to Jesus, he gives me, grants me the blessing of strength to do it. Because I am weak, but thou art strong. <laughs> Jesus, oh Jesus, keep me from now on. Just the close to walk with thee. Oh, let it be, dear Lord. Oh, let it be. Hey, then we, we just bud up every time, hallelujah. Blossoming and blooming, pluming dust all around, as we say, yes to Jesus. <laughs> hey, isn't he wonderful? So, Matthew 10, Matthew 10. My dear wife managed to escape, unbeknown to her, the death of her de facto, de facts about her de facto, the one she was living in sin with, the facts are it was all a miracle in disguise. It was all a blessing in disguise because he, he died. And moved on as an unsaved person. And we know where they go. And then she had that golden opportunity to escape all the folly. Hey? And meet with the King of Kings and become a new, brand new. Plastic still on the doors. Emmanuel of the Manuel of Emmanuel in the glove box. Hey? Keys given to her by Almighty God to understanding, knowledge, wisdom, peace and joy, power, Holy Ghost, and blessing. On true repentance and faint obedience. Amen. Blessing in disguise that when things are removed out of our way and lives and many mourn and mourn for the rest of their lives and we realise, hey, most don't realise, hey, the Lord's saying something here. He's telling you once again it's all temporary. You wouldn't be so bogged down if you would have had me as number one and not him, her, them or that. Someone say amen. <laughs> you wouldn't have been so uptight and nearly had a heart attack and a seizure, a stroke, great depression if all that money that was stolen from you and robbed from you by investors was number two, three, or 23, and I was number one because I know all the pain and you can't share all your joy with anyone except me because when you have the joy on you, people only get just a little bit of the overflow, but you're there. Wow! I feel good. I knew that I would now. <laughs> After I went to that meeting, woo, I knew that I would now. And people say, oh, all right. And they give a bit of a half a smile sort of thing. But the Lord's up there going, yeah. <laughs> woo, he's rejoicing at me now. Yeah, I feel good. And the angels are there too. Oh yeah, he feels good. Because he's Jesus' priority. Not the diamonds, not the gold, not the mates, not the, the superficial friends, 
not the uh, the um, the fact uh, not the anything Jesus number one not the wife not the children not the profession or the possessions Jesus he wants to let us down lightly you know at least you dash your foot on a rock <laughs> he always says ooh you know like you're sort of driving the car and you're in the middle of a, 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 a could be accident which could probably wipe out the whole front of your vehicle and send one of the children through the windscreen and I've been there and someone hasn't been doing the road rule thing and I've had to break in that much time swerve in that much time and think of which direction I'm going to go, and it all happened in half of that much time, and everything was sweet. You say, whoa, <laughs> Jesus is on the case. Angels are moving. You know what I mean? Angels gave you super-duper breaks, and you've only got old daggy brains. The Lord just touched the whole situation and it all just sort of went and just sort of drove on, you know. <laughs> it was like it was rewind. <laughs> the Lord is your shepherd and you have no one. So my wife got a very important and, and powerful revelation and gem to share, to give today to the world to put in their spiritual jewelry box the gem that says diamonds aren't forever the gem that says uh, human flesh is not forever the gem that says jesus is forever the 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 gem and jewel and treasure that says that Heaven and earth will pass away with all the diamonds and gold too. But the word of God remains forever. Build your life on the forever, on the word of God. Build, stand on, rely on, put all your eggs on and in the basket called the word of God. Can someone say amen? Hey? Hallelujah. That's the message. Deep seated in the diamonds aren't forever. A revelation and realization. A manifestation of a young lady from a third world country who had it all put in front of her and more and tasted of the riches of Egypt in her realm and departed and laid hold of the stick, the word of God, the rod of God, and is living happily ever after. <laughs> hey? Not a fairy tale, not a fantasy, but a reality. Hey? A reality that she had opportunity to see the folly in, in high places. To rub shoulders with the rich and the well-to-do. She'd been there as Moses was there and, and came out of poverty, just like my wife, and was placed into a palace. as my wife was in a type of a palace to her anyway. Upper middle class, living, forest, forestry surrounding the dwelling and, and uh, everything she needed and more, the best of clothes food 
a shofar. Meaning, with the rich at, 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 at fancy parties, and she's seen the hypocrisy and falsity and folly of these wealthy ones. The jealousy and the competition and competitiveness. And she can reflect on that and say, no, I don't want that. I got something bigger and better. I got a bottomless treasury. I'm an infinite heir. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. I have joy unspeakable. I have peace that surpasses the understanding of the mind. I have a guarantee from the one who cannot lie that I will live in his house. For in his house are many mansions. And if it were not so, he would have told us so. But because it is so, he goes to prepare a place for those who would be faithful and loyal to him unto death. If we endure to the end, we will be saved to the uttermost. And everybody said, amen. and amen, and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hey? Thank you, Jesus. We can give the glory to Jesus today and walk in the light as he is in the light that we may have might to fight the fight of faith faithfully for Father to the finish. Diamonds. Diamonds aren't forever. Hallelujah. <laughs> Diamonds aren't forever. Humans aren't forever. We must put all our trust. We must, as the scripture says very clearly, let's read it. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of my eternal riches. Is, they're not worthy of my uh, uh, bottomless cup of joy and peace. They're not worthy. That's what the word of God says. They're not worthy. That's the word of the Lord. And everybody said, amen. and amen, and amen. They're not worthy to have the blessings of God, the creator, upon their lives. He has to be number one. And everybody said again, amen.